the Goethe statue in Strasbourg. In his day, even though locals spoke a German dialect, Alsace was part of France. In the 1770s, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe had a love affair with Friederike Brion, a Parsons daughter from Alsace. She understood his love letters, but these days he'd be hard put to find anyone in the region with fluent German. Benjamin Ludwig is a rapper with the music group Hopla Guys. He feels that fluency in both French and German is an integral part of the Alsace identity. He has performed in Alsatian German and campaigns against right-wing extremism. My brother sang in Alsatian German wearing a Palestinian scarf. What we want to do is tackle preconceptions. Preconceptions such as the idea that Germans are all neo-Nazis. The problem was Hitler. Hitler crippled the people of Alsace when he forcibly recruited our men, our fathers, our grandfathers, to the Wehrmacht even though they were French. This is a trauma that we've never come to terms with. Not even Martin Graf's own family. At the start of the war, his father served in the French army, but by the end of the war he was wearing a Wehrmacht uniform. 130,000 men from Alsace were forcibly recruited by the Nazis. Hitler annexed Alsace in 1940, claiming the population as ethnic Germans. That experience cast its shadow well beyond the post-war years. How could they explain to their mothers and wives what they had seen and possibly even done in Russia? They couldn't. They shut the door on it. They refused to speak about it and forbade their children from even speaking about it, so as to avoid ever again ending up as a French soldier wearing a German uniform fighting another country. For decades, the government in Paris banned Alsatian German in schools. Over the years, even families stopped speaking it as much. This has put many at a professional disadvantage. Claude Fröhlicke runs a Franco-German business consultancy in Colmar. He says that a number of innovative companies can't and no longer expect to find bilingual staff in Alsace. There are tens of thousands of jobs on the German and Swiss border, as well as in Alsace itself. Companies expect people here to speak excellent German. And that means French applicants don't get the jobs because their German isn't good enough. Frelicher sends his children to a bilingual school. He tells them about various stereotypical images of Germans and why they came about. For now, there's a divide here in Alsace. On the one hand, there are people like us who have no prejudices, who just think it's great to be able to speak French and German. But then there are others who are still very prejudiced about Germans. Under pressure from parental associations, the French government has begun to address the issue. Some 25,000 children are now getting intensive German lessons. If the demand grows, the school authorities could run into difficulty. There aren't enough people who speak German well enough. I'm talking about people who studied it and can speak it fluently. It's probably because we neglected German for so long. The economic situation now requires people to speak both languages. But we're at a point where we see fewer students interested in German. 
Bilingual schools weren't an option when Benjamin Ludwig grew up. He learned German from his father. When they were younger, my sons didn't want to learn German. They thought it was an ugly language. Now they ask me what various words mean. I speak Alsatian German with my grandchildren. I want to hear my mother tongue spoken again. Goethe would have been glad to hear it. He's no longer the only one in Strasbourg who loves the German language.